Hey guys, it's Mark with Gut Duckless here with another video talking about duckless condensate management. So we did another video earlier on where we talked about the talking points of whether you can install a system on an interior wall or if it had to be on the exterior wall. And so today we're actually going to show you some, uh, some things with a duckless uh, mini split here and we're going to work with the condensate and share some of our tidbits of what to do when installing a mini split. So as always, let's get started. So today we have a Mitsubishi ductless unit, just a traditional wall mounted unit installed here on a bracket. And I just wanna say before we go with, into this video talking about condensate, that this can be applied to the majority of ductless units that are in the American market. Um, they're all pretty much built the same. So anything that we talk about today it can be applied to a lot of different manufacturers, not just Mitsubishi. So we're going to be talking about how to connect a flex drain line and what adapters to use and which way it can go um, and uh, some of those details when it comes to condensate. So to get started, we're going to turn the system around. We're going to see what it looks like on the backside once the wall mounted unit is installed on the wall. So this is what the system looks like after um, installation, after you install the wall mounted unit on the wall and we you drill your two and a half inch or three inch hole, um, typically for Mitsubishi it's two and a half, but for other manufacturers it might be three. Um, but it comes through the wall like this, all ductless manufacturers do the same thing. You have your condensate line here that's uh, insulated as well as your refrigerant lines that are also insulated here as well. So today we're gonna ignore the, the refrigerant lines are here. We're gonna simply talk about the condensate line here, the condensate hose. So this condensate hose can be directed down with gravity or on, the, uh, on a horizontal slope, but making sure that your condensate hose is always underneath the refrigerant lines to make sure that you don't have any clogs anywhere. So one thing to note here about this condensate hose, it's about 14 inches from, as, as an extension from the wall mounted unit here, but it's, it's insulated at the end, it has uh, an adapter. And so you don't want to cut this because of that adapter to whether you're adapting it to flex hose or to PVC, um, just make sure that you're, you're not cutting this hose and you're leaving it at the 14 inch extension that it is. Now for the majority of ductless mini split installations, this is gonna be your typical setup. You're gonna have that wall mounted unit on the wall and most of the time you're gonna be using what's called flex drain. Now this is a corrugated 5 8 flex drain. It's super popular. Uh, we at Got Duckless um, prefer using corrugated uh, rather than clear tubing or something of the like because clear tubing tends to shrink and when it shrinks over time it can cause clogs and stuff like that. So for this corrugated it's affordable and it doesn't have that effect and so that's what we're going to use today and that's what's most common in the industry. Today with me as well as the flex drain we also have these adapters. So uh, one is a 16 millimeter adapter drain, a mini split drain line adapter and the other is a 25 millimeter and we'll go over the differences and why you would use them for uh, this application. So hopefully it's helpful for you. So we want to connect this flex drain line to this ending here of the condensate hose. And so one might ask, okay, why can't you just take the flex hose and push it into here? Well, you technically could, but this flex drain can vary in size. It's, uh, it's a plastic, so it um, is all not uniform. Like for example, this side of this hose fits a lot more snug than the other side. So since you have that variance and you wanna make sure that you're not um, having any leaks in the future, um, you wanna make sure that you're using the right fittings. So the solution for that is this um, mini split drain adapter that we just uh, covered. Now this a drain adapter fits a lot more snug. It's exact the exact size um, of the condensate hose. And here, uh, if you're gravity draining, it's, it's sitting pretty snug. Uh, you could clamp it if you want, but if you're doing horizontal, you definitely want to clamp it, make sure you don't have any black flow. And now from this, since it has multiple steps, you're able to add your flex drain directly to the steps to whichever um, makes sense for you, depending on the size of the 
uh, the drain hose, the flex drain hose, and then from here you want to clamp it from both sides to make sure that this is a snug condensate connection, making sure that you don't have any condensate leaks in your wall or outside um, in maybe places that you don't want in your closet or anything like that. Um, so this is the proper way to do it and uh, this is what most of the professionals will do. Once you have this connection made and it's clamped today, we don't have the clamps um, since we're not doing anything serious and not doing this for permanent installation. If you're running this uh, condensate drain downward with gravity, maybe you have the wall mounts that you installed on an exterior wall and you're pointing it outside and it's just going straight down to your condenser. You just run this downward, making sure that your condensate hose isn't uh, squeezed or pinched, making sure that the refrigerant line that is going also alongside the condensate hose isn't squeezing that condensate hose in a way that uh, eventually it would clog it um, or, or pinch it in, in a way that um, there would be restriction to your flow. So make sure that you're running it alongside parallel and it's not squeezed um, up along this, uh, this hole. Now, if you're running it horizontally, let's just say you install the wall uh, mounted unit uh, on a interior wall and it's going into a closet and you need to maybe take a left turn or a right turn, um, making sure that your condensate hose here is always sloped downward. So if you have to run both your line sets to the left here, you want to make sure that you're not kinking the refrigerant line one, but since we're not talking about the d that today, we want to make sure that the condensate hose here is always going on the bottom of the line set that's running alongside of it here. So if we're twisting this on the other side for a better view, let's uh, make sure we're not kinking the refrigerant line here. And we won't go all the way just for uh, kicks and giggles today, but we'll at least show you uh, what we mean. So if your line set is running on the op opposite side and your condensate hose here is running alongside of it, you don't want to go over, obviously, because then you'd have to go up and then down. You want to make sure that your condensate hose is running underneath the line set and running along the line set, along with the line set, but always on the bottom sloping downward. So if you're someone that doesn't want to use flex strain, you'd prefer to use hard PVC because maybe you are running a horizontal line, um, you know, and you want to clamp it to the wall and you don't want it to be droopy uh, and you just want to completely avoid that. You can use hard PVC. So our recommendation is if you use half inch um, hard PVC here, uh, schedule 40, then you can technically, um, this is PVC right here on this adapter, and you can push this in, obviously prime it and then glue it and push it in and connect it. And that is a firm, uh, firm connection there that you can run, whether it's you're running horizontally or you're dropping straight down. Now, if you want to use a larger size, like three quarter to avoid uh, any clogs or anything like that, you just want a larger diameter. Um, with using this uh, type of connection, uh, it's recommended to use a half inch um, uh, line here and then adapt it to from half inch to three quarter and then run the, the rest of the way with three quarter. Um, now you might say that might not be very efficient because you can have a clog here within the first uh, 16 inches but some people prefer to do it that way. So that, that is your uh, prerogative. Um, we think that half, running a half inch hard PVC is perfectly fine. Um, so that, that is uh, the methodology. Now we use this connection here. Um, it's a 5 8 connection uh, with this PVC step down. Um, but we also mentioned this other adapter. Now this one is for drain hoses that are a little bit larger than this 5 8 the Mitsubishi uses 5 8 uh, drain hose, but some manufacturers use a little bit bigger, like a 3 quarter. So this adapter here has a larger um, uh, diameter, so this is for those larger drain hoses. So you can use uh, whichever adapter works best for you and whichever um, manufacturer uh, drain hose size that you have to work with. So those are some tidbits when working with hard PVC instead of flex drain line. Now another note to, uh, to make note of here is if you're connecting your flex drain hose and you're running it horizontally, you want to make sure that with your horizontal slope that you don't have any droops where it potentially is going up and down, up and down. 
You don't want to do that. It will cause backflow. It will cause cloggage issues. Um, when your system is draining, it's pulling out any dust or anything that's from the coil and draining it away as well as just with regular condensate. So if you have gunk that's building up and you have a barely sloped line, that gunk's going to build up and you're going to have a clog. It's causing you it's going to cause your indoor unit to shut off with an error code um, because it doesn't want to, uh, you know, um, overflow the drain pan and then have a flood in the room. Um, so it's going to shut off the indoor unit, causing an inconvenience. So when you're running a horizontal line, make sure that you have enough slope and you're clamping it as much as possibly needed to make sure that you don't have any droops or ebbs and flows in that line. It's constantly sloping downward. So a lot of people have asked us, what do you do with this condensate once it's left the unit and is making its way towards some form of an exit and how do you exit? So our recommendation is to check with your local code. Every state, every county is different. Um, everyone has their own uh, recommendations and their own solutions. There's some places that don't want you to dump condensate into a sump pump because of maybe uh, smells that could come back to the unit. Um, some people or some states and some regulations want you to go outside um, all the time. So I would check with your local authorities and your local permitting and make sure that uh, you're doing everything by code to pass inspection if, uh, if needed. Now, one thing to note, and when you are exiting, there are different methodologies to use. And a lot of people will go, just go outside uh, that's the most preferable um, method and when you're doing that and you're transitioning either with flex drain or with hard pvc with flex drain you can drop it anywhere um, it's it's not like it's a gutter where it's going to be pouring water all the time um, but it is going to be a steady flow of water during only the summertime not the winter time it's not condensating uh, in the winter time so you don't have to worry about it freezing or anything like that now, uh, what to do with the water when it's outside? A lot of people will just exit it at the outdoor unit with the line set. The refrigerant lines have to run to the outdoor unit anyway, so they run the condensate with the refrigerant lines all the way to the outdoor unit, and then the water will just dump um, next to the outdoor unit. Some people, when they transition to hard PVC, uh, like we talked about before, they put a, a 45 degree elbow uh, when it goes down as close to the the bottom um, of the house as possible. They'll put a 45 degree elbow and then they'll stump it out away from the foundation of the house, maybe six or seven inches away um, to look nice as well as keep water away from the foundation of the house. So that's the most common way, uh, but there's all sorts of different ways to do it. Whatever makes the most sense for you. Maybe you have a garden that you wanna water in the summertime, you could do, uh, you could do it that way. Um, if you're uh, exiting condensate, on the inside of the house uh, and it's by code some people will throw it into a sump pump or um, in, in a drain of some sort whatever makes the most sense for you and your application and whatever um, makes sense for the code in the um, in the area that you live in so today we covered how, what to do with condensate when you have a gravity feed and you have a downward slope using flex drain hose as well as transitioning to hard PVC. What we didn't talk about today is if you don't have a downward slope from your indoor unit to wherever you're um, depositing that condensate. So what do you do in that circumstance? Well, you use a pump. So today we're not going to talk about the details of which pumps to use, how to install the pumps and the details thereafter, but we will leave that for the next video because there are so many details that we want to cover to make sure that you know what you can do if you're in that situation. In the meantime, we hope that you learned a lot about condensate management today uh, in practicality, and we hope you stick around for the next video where we're talking about pumps. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.